Hi, in this video we will create an artificial neural network for learning word embeddings, that is numerical representations for words that approximate their meaning. More specifically, we will create a crude implementation of an algorithm known as word to vec or word to vector. This algorithm learns representations or embeddings for words by predicting which words tend to co-occur with each other. We will implement the neural network using a library named Keras, which is a part of a bigger library called TensorFlow. And to get started, we import the Keras submodule from the TensorFlow library and a particular type of layer in the neural network called dense. We then start building the neural network by defining an input layer which receives the data that we prepared in the previous video. To create the input layer, we call the input class from the Keras module, which takes two arguments. The first one is called shape, which simply defines the shape of the input. So in this case, we fetch the shape from the shape argument of the targets matrix that we prepared in the previous video and take the second value in the tuple. You may remember from the previous video that our one-hot encoded vectors are 23 dimensions long, so this is the information that we provide to the input layer. The input layer must know what kind of input it's supposed to receive, so in this case we simply tell the input layer that it will receive 23 dimensional vectors as input. The second argument name is pretty self-explanatory, so we simply give a name to the input layer. Finally, we assign the resulting input layer under the variable network underscore input. Next, we define a hidden layer that receives the input from the input layer. And this layer is of specific type called dense, which takes several arguments. The first argument is called units, which defines the number of artificial neurons in this layer, whereas the second one is activation, which defines the activation function that is applied to the output of this dense layer. In this case, we define the value none, so there is no activation function. We also name the hidden layer as hidden underscore layer. We then give the name of the preceding layer, that is the input layer, in parentheses after the definition of this layer to connect the two layers. So what actually happens between the input layer and the hidden layer? You can think of the input a 23-dimensional vector being connected to two artificial neurons in the dense layer. In other words, we have two connections from the input layer to both of the neurons in the hidden layer. And each of these connections holds another 23-dimensional vector that we call the weight. This weight vector is used to multiply the input vector. In other words, every dimension of the input vector is multiplied by the corresponding dimension in the weight vector. Finally, the output of the multiplication is simply summed up, and this is the output of the neuron in the dense layer. In other words, what comes out of this hidden layer are two values, one for each neuron. And as the code shows, we assign the hidden layer under the variable hidden underscore layer. We then proceed to define the output layer of the network, which is also of the type dense. As such, the dense layer has precisely the same arguments as the previous dense layer, which we referred to as the hidden layer. The values, however, are naturally different, so for the argument units, which defines the number of neurons, we fetch the value from the context word matrix, 
from the attribute shape which corresponds to 23 that is the number of lemmas in our vocabulary which is of course something that we want to predict using the output layer so each one of the neurons in the output layer corresponds to a lemma in our vocabulary we also use the activation argument to define a softmax activation function for the output layer this activation function squashes the values of the neurons in the output layer so that they sum up to one this gives us a probability distribution over the 23 lemmas in our vocabulary so when we provide a lemma to the network as input what we get back is a prediction of which lemma is likely to co-occur with the input lemma finally we name this layer as the output underscore layer and we then connect this output layer to the hidden layer by placing the name of the hidden layer in parentheses after the layer definition we also assign the resulting dense layer under the variable output underscore layer finally let's take a moment to think about the relationship between the hidden layer and the output layer the hidden layer has two neurons and each neuron is connected to 23 neurons in the output layer so every neuron in the hidden layer has a connection to every neuron in the output layer and just as between the input and the hidden layer each connection between the neurons is characterized by a weight and these weights are used to multiply the output values from the hidden layer which then gives us the output values for the output layer next we wrap up the definition of the neural network by taking the model class from keras and defining two arguments inputs and outputs for inputs we give the name of the input layer and for outputs we give the name of the output layer and we store the resulting model under the name embedding underscore model next we use the compile method to compile the model and to define a loss function using the loss argument the loss function is used to approximate the error made by the neural network when predicting context words given some target words and to give this error a numerical value this error is used to adjust the weights of the network which characterize the connections between the different neurons in a way that should potentially improve the predictions during the next time the network is run we can then use the summary method to examine the resulting model which has three layers we have the input layer the hidden layer and the output layer on the right hand side you see the parameters which correspond to the weights that the neural network will update during the training process when learning to make predictions about the context words given a target word thanks for watching i hope you found this video useful um, in the next video we will train the neural network to make predictions about context words given a input word and we then also examine the output or what the model has learned